Joe Polish, I'm here with my good friend Nordine. What's up, dude? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, doing great. We're here at uh, you know Piranha Marketing Headquarters, where Genius Network happens, and uh, decided to do an interview with him about uh, health, fitness, weight loss, um, and all kinds of stuff related to just being in better physical condition. I've known Nordine for, gosh, over you know 13, 14 years. Very smart guy. Only portion of this uh, interview I'll be reading, just to make sure I give some background for those who may never heard of Nordine, uh, a.k.a. Avatar. Very strange name that he has. But, Indeed. Uh, yeah. Nordine Zorag, a.k.a. Avatar. I'm going to call him Nordine, but if you hear me call him Avatar, whatever, <laughs> you'll understand. Okay, here's who this dude is. He's an internationally acclaimed self-development fitness and wellness expert, author and motivational speaker. His unique holistic teaching methods embraced in his mind over body program allow his clients to lead richer, happier, and healthier lives. Nordine's own remarkable life story highlights how he overcame huge, almost insurmountable obstacles that would have deterred most people from even thinking success could be possible. With ever-increasing workouts and proper nutrition, he transformed himself from a scrawny runt into a world champion athlete, claiming the Mr. France, Mr. Europe, Mr. World, and Mr. Universe titles, the second youngest Mr. Universe in history, second to Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's pretty cool. Yeah, as, yeah, as if they were his birthright. Additionally, Nordine was named an alien of extraordinary ability, a special status reserved for only a few elite athletes whose extraordinary ability in science, arts, education, business, and athletics have been demonstrated by sustained national or international acclaim and whose achievements have been recognized in the field through extensive documentation. You see how I nearly got all choked up even saying that? <laughs> right. Now residing in Tucson, Arizona, which is a cool place. Uh, Nordine has worked under Dr. Dharma, the world's leading authority of brain longevity and memory loss and put in charge of patient wellness at Calsa International. Hopefully I said that right. Yes, you did. Awesome. As well as having worked at Miraville Resort and Spa with high-profile A-list clients, including Oprah, Barbara Streisand, Sophia Loren, Charlie Sheen, Ellen DeGeneres, Janet Jackson, John Kerry, Teresa Hines Kerry, Sugar Ray Leonard, and spoke at companies such as Lehman Brothers, uh, Cardillette Health Network, the National Institute of Whole Health, LA Sports Clubs, the Atlantic Group, New York, and many, many more. His first book, Mind Over Body, The Key to Lasting Weight Loss and All is All in Your Head, was a groundbreaking success making his mind and body influencing techniques available to a wider audience. And Nordine speaks five languages, which is better than me because I speak only one, and holds a master's degree in physical education and is a certified wellness coach and personal trainer. Nordine's passions are his family, his work, and his spirituality. I do know your story, but it, a lot of people would have no idea. It's actually quite shocking. When I first met you, you know, I mean, I had no idea. And then once I got to know you and you actually told me some of the stuff in your background and how you grew up and your parents, I mean, it's pretty freaking wild. And it's actually quite extraordinary how you have made such a transformation. So let's go through it because the purpose of this interview, obviously I want to get some, you know, advice for the watchers, the viewers, the listeners that can help them get just healthier and feel better. But all in all, I mean, I think a lot of your story is really just inspirational on how you can overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. You just happen to direct a lot of it towards physique, health, and fitness and all that. But uh, yeah, so start from the beginning, I guess. Yeah, so, well, as I said, you know, I was, uh, I was born in the back of a truck from uh, bedroom parents, illiterate bedroom parents, and uh, was in French <clears throat> army truck um, that uh, was taking my parents to vote for the independence of Algeria. Wow. And, um, I was, um, my mom was in the truck, my father and both my grandparents, and uh, it was my time. I was born premature, three months premature, and my mom was 15 years old. Wow. A lot of what you, you teach your clients today are not just exercises and stuff, but it's really just meditation and mental practices and mind over body and that sort of stuff. So um, what is the most important ingredient for someone to make a physical transformation. I mean, I wish I could be more practical in terms of the terminology, but to just really, you know, if they're in a not a good place or they just want to have a breakthrough, I mean, what, what are the necessary ingredients uh, that are first needed before, you know, someone goes and sees their doctor to see yeah. if they can work out, that sort of thing? To come back to your, answer, your question about how you, what is the first ingredient? It's the mind. Mm -hmm. Because the body is the servant of the mind. The body will do only the things that the mind tells it. 
you write about inner sizing, which is kind of an interesting term. What the hell is inner sizing? Part of my inner sizing is meditation, affirmation, and visualization. There's other you know, ways to inner size. Inner size is paying attention to what's going on inside. Um, I call it the shower of the inside. In order to be performant in life, you have to take time to calm down, time to see and, and create your own life, you know, your, your day. Only by doing that, you're able to follow through. When you don't do that, your life seems to be chaotic because you don't know what needs to be done first and you don't see how that looks like. You don't see or you don't feel how that should feel. When you take time in the morning, you know, what do people do first in the morning, Joe? They wake up, what do they do? Uh, Drink go coffee, to the bathroom, uh... get a coffee, coffee pot or drive to, 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 to Starbucks and get a big coffee mocha, by then they answered emails, text messages, phone calls, and you know what now. These are unhealthy ways to start a day. Mm -hmm. But people think it's productive. Why not start your day by, if you don't want to meditate, that's fine. But sit in your bed, put your back against the wall, breathe. Close your eyes and let, you know, we, most of the time our body wakes us up, or our mind wakes us up, not our body. Our body still wants to rest. Mm -hmm. Your mind wakes you up. And you're all over the place at one time. Take the time, take five minutes, five minutes, and you will feel what I'm talking about. It's almost like bliss. Th that would be the opposite of something that sucks. Exactly. So. But no, no, see, <laughs> see, but because, you know, I want, to, I want you to understand, the people that are watching this, to understand what it feels and looks like to jump and rush into things. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you come home and you're totally exhausted. You're so exhausted that you cannot even sleep. Hmm. You know, I have so many clients that tell me horrible stories, like they can't sleep one hour. They can't sleep two hours. Some, some claim that, you know, they're more performant by sleeping three hours. This remain to be seen. And I would say, this remain to be felt because it's impossible to feel great and be performant if you don't have enough rest. Right. So how it starts? It starts by the morning. You woke up, you rushed into things, got your big cup of coffee. By the way, it's only in America that I saw coffee uh, mugs like this. People, people Let drink. Give me a gallon mocha. Yeah, a mocha. <laughs> oh, they, they drink Coca-Cola in the morning. You know, it's just amazing. You know, we say people drink a lot of coffee in, in France or Italy. I would say people drink more coffee here. You know, so it's coffee, newspaper, bad news, television, um, you know, all kinds of, and then that's be before you even get to the office. <laughs> when your secretary is rushing into the office and she's giving you all kinds of bad news, hoping that you're gonna fix the problem instead of them bringing you a solution.